Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope everybody had an unbelievable weekend. Um, for me, it was extremely busy. Uh, got a lot going on. Got a lot of projects uh, on deck uh, that are going into full swing this month. This month is a very pivotal month for Rick Wallace Enterprises, uh, as well as the Odyssey Project, uh, where I'm the executive director founder and executive director. Um, <clears throat> speaking of the Odyssey Project, before I get started, uh, I want to remind everybody that uh, I have a major uh, project kicking off. It starts with the writing of my 25th book, which is obviously a milestone, something that I'm extremely proud of. As I've shared before, it's not something that I had uh, ever planned. Uh, I didn't set out to write 25 books. I set out to write one and realized that I had a lot to give the world by way of literature. And so I've been writing mad crazy long before that, but uh, when it comes to books uh, since then. In this new uh, quest uh, for this new book project, it is centered around the absolute necessity that we build collective generational wealth within the black community uh, and that we start now. And this book has been years in the making as far as research. Um, and we started writing, when I say we, I mean me, <laughs> started writing this, this month. And uh, the goal is to have it done before the end of the year. Uh, what I'm doing differently, uh, for those who aren't aware, what I'm doing differently uh, with this project is I am inviting my community, those people who appreciate the work I do, those people who have followed me, those people who believe uh, what I do is necessary. I'm inviting you guys to sponsor uh, the project. And the way that works is you, you, you choose your own sponsorship amount, whatever it is, and your name will be published in the finished work. Um, along with whatever memorial you want to write with it. You can memorialize anybody you want, um, a family member, a coach, uh, uh, you know, you know, wh whoever uh, you can, you, you can, if not, I uh, had a couple of people so far who have actually acknowledged their spouses who are still living. Uh, it's up to you. There are different categories. Anybody who sponsors over $25, um, we'll get a book, a signed copy of the book. Uh, anybody who sponsors over $100 will have a dedicated page, meaning that their, uh, their state name and statement will be on a page by itself. Um, and again, this is something I've never done before, but I decided with this project and the depth of it and how deep I want to go, I invited my uh, community in to be a part of it and to assist me in it to some to some degree and the information is in the description box you can click on it you can go to the page and get more information watch the video get a better understanding and then you can definitely sponsor once you sponsor I'll contact you uh, first to thank you and then to ask you what you want in the book uh, along with your name uh, that's that. Also, there are some other resources in the description box for those who are looking to take charge of their lives and want to make changes. All right. Moving on. Uh, your your time is coming. Uh, this has been something that's been on my mind all weekend long because I have people who will contact me via email. Uh, they'll drop in on comments on articles. I I've written on numerous different uh, websites, platforms, uh, videos, um, and it's well, I've done this and I've done that and I've been doing it for this long. And it, it, I, I'm frustrated because it hasn't happened yet. And I just want to, first of all, speak to those people. Your time is coming now. The write-up that you see in the description box, the write-up that you see in the description box is actually something I wrote several years ago. Um, 
And I just happened to be scrolling down uh, my news feed on Facebook and I saw someone had shared it. And maybe it popped up on their members. I'm not sure how it came across it, but it's someone who uh, definitely reads my stuff. Um, and they shared it. And I went and I'm like, okay, I saw it was posted with a meme uh, of a tweet of David Banner talking about people want muscle, but don't want to hit the gym. People want, you know, X, Y, Z, but don't want to put in the work. But then when I went to the reading, I always want to read. So I can get even a big memes are not great teachers. They're great attention getters. You got to go a lot deeper than the mean. If you really want to train yourself, you really want to learn, you really want to develop. I mean, it's a good place to start. It's a good place, like I said, to get your attention, to give you an idea, to give you a concept, to give you something to think about. But you got to want to go deeper if you really want to grow. And the thing is, people don't want to go deeper. It's kind of like almost like what this whole thing is about. Well, anyway. I start reading and realize it's me. I'm like, wow, this, this sure sounds familiar. And then I look at the bottom and it's got my name on it. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to share it. Now, it's it's kind of looped at the end. The last paragraph and sentence, I think, is actually in the beginning of the write-up. But I left it exactly how that person shared it because obviously they did it on purpose. Um, but anyway, uh, I want to let the people who are really struggling with the fact that they're giving it all they have and it seems that nothing is happening. I wanna let you know your time is coming. The law of reciprocity, uh, which can also be referred to as the law of sowing and reaping, is universal and it's undefeated. You will reap what you sow. And we, we tend, uh, especially those of us who grew up in a Christian background, we tend to think of reaping as something negative. No, reaping is simply receiving the results of our labor, the results of what we put out, the results of how we behave. Uh, it's not negative or positive, it's what you put out. If you put out negative, you get back negative. If you put out good, you get back good. The reaping isn't a negative thing, the reaping is the reality. And you get to create your reality by what you put out. But before I get back to you and I finish encouraging you, I want to talk to another group. Those of you that I address at the beginning of this write-up, that you want the better house, you want the better income, you want the better marriage, you want to be a better parent, you want all these things, but when it comes down to it, you're not willing to put in the work. Like I said in the write-up, that life will pay whatever price you demand of it. Life is not uh, a, 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 a showing favoritism. Life is simply responding to what people are uh, uploading into it, and it's returning back to them. Now, this doesn't mean that if you're a nice guy, people won't be mean to you. That's not what it means. It doesn't mean that there are some things. What it means is that when you sit up and you put in the work, your work can't be denied that you've got to be consistent in your work. You've got to be faithful in your work. And you've got to know that your work is returning to you what you've invested in it. But you've got to understand some principles that most people don't take time to teach. They want to talk about the law of attraction, but they don't want to talk about the process. You got a bunch of people walking around saying, well, if I say it and if I think it, then I'll have it. That's the saying it and thinking it is the beginning. That's the planting of the seed. But the seed has what is known as a germination and a gestation period. The germination is the opening of the seed once it has been planted so that it can receive the nourishment that's necessary for it to sprout out. See, most people aren't aware of the germination process of what they're doing. See, they want to do something and they want an immediate return. But see, there's a germination process, the process in which you plant, plant the seed and then the seed opens up. And then when the seed opens up, there has to be nourishment for the seed in order for the seed to grow strong and to take root and to sprout out. Most of you aren't nourishing what you put down. Most of you aren't consistently revisiting your vision. Most of you aren't sitting up and acting on what you believe will happen. Most of you are sitting around and waiting. You want the promise, but you're not prepared to endure the process. 
See, that's why most of us never truly experience the fruit of our faith is because we're sitting around thinking faith is a magical process that if I just say it, it happens. No, that's why uh, that's why James said faith without works is dead. And James doubled down on that. My favorite part of that particular passage is they, J, James doubled down on that and said, if you'll show me your faith without works, I'll show you my faith. What? By my works. You'll know what I believe in by watching me do what I do. Did you get that? I don't have to talk what I believe. You'll see it in my actions. See, there's something some people are talking and saying what they believe, but I watch their actions. Like, you don't really believe it. First of all, if you believe it, you wouldn't be becoming frenetic and unglued. You wouldn't be upside down. You wouldn't be stressing. You wouldn't be worried because you would understand that what you have put out is coming back. What is promised cannot be denied. You would understand. Oh, faith of that works is dead. So. James is the same one that said you can't be double minded either. You go back one more chapter and, you know, hey, again, it's leading up to it. What, you, you go back one more chapter and say, hey, <laughs> double mindedness. You know, you're saying one thing, but you're behaving a different way. That's borderline mental illness. Um, do you know that the mind is really strained and stressed when you're saying one thing and you're doing something different. It's not made to do that. And you wonder why you're always on edge. It's because you're talking the game, but you're not living it. But, 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 but moving on, what I'm trying to get you to understand is there is a germination period where the seed is planted and then the seed is in the ground and the seed begins to open up so that it receives the nourishment within the soil. See, now here's the thing that's going to get some of you. I have said for years that adversity is the fertile soil in which faith is planted and cultivated. What does it mean? It means you can't grow character outside of adversity. You can't build strength outside of adversity. If you go in the gym and you're not pushing your body to a point where there's resistance and physical adversity, you can't grow. You can't grow without emotional. Why? Because it has to be tested and moved and strengthened. But adversity is the fertile soil. So what happens? You plant the seed and, 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 and then you've got to understand that it's going to come through and go through some things. But that's the beauty of it. It's not in the absence of difficulty that the promise is fulfilled. It's not in the circumvention of life's vicissitudes that the promise is fulfilled. It's not in finding the easy way around. It's through the storm through the disappointment, through the frustration, through the heartache, through people abandoning you, through people telling you no time and time and time and time again, that you will find that you are literally developing and nurturing the seed that you planted. So you don't need but one yes. You don't need but one yes. And you already have the yes, if you truly know. But let's move on. The problem is after you germinate, then there's the gestation period, the growth. Now, see, a lot of people have planted acorns, which produce oak trees, but you want a gestation period for a rose bush. See, now the gestation period for the rose bush is a lot shorter than the gestation period for the oak tree. There is uh, a bamboo tree uh, in, I believe, China, 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 if I'm not mistaken, the Chinese bamboo tree that takes five years to sprout for sprouts to over a hundred feet in 90 days after it begins to sprout. But for five years, you got to water something you don't see. Oh, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that not seen. 
Faith is what makes you water a bamboo tree for five years while people walking about thinking you're crazy. You're just sitting there watering that dirt month after month after month. And he's sitting there and he's watering that dirt. But in five years, you see it sprout up. And in 90 days, you have a fully grown 100 foot tall bamboo shoot. You have to understand that it's a gestation period that is in the part of the process. You, you plant, you water, you nurture, you watch, you defend, you pull up weeds. Weeds are the negative things that pop up around it. Weeds are the, the minimal minded opinions of naysayers. Weeds are the people in your periphery that want to remind you of what you used to be. Weeds are the ones of people trying to sit up and remind you of how many people who start a business fail in the first three to five years. Those are, you got to weed them out. So you inherit your original circle. You're born into it. You don't have a choice. You, you got your parents, your siblings, your your peers, uh, your your teachers, your your past. You 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 inherit that first circle. That's not the circle that's going to get you to the promise. I can guarantee you. Now, maybe a few that come along with you, but you've got to do something that most people are uncomfortable with doing. You've got to build and develop and cultivate a new circle. This is one that, this one is constructed with the promise and the destiny in mind. This one will have people in it who have already done what you've done. This will have people in it who are going where you're going. This will have people in it who believe in you more than you believe in yourself. You've got to cultivate a circle that will pour into you as much as it's taking out. But if you keep pushing, your day is coming. It can't be denied. Nothing good will be withheld. You got to understand that a lot of times, especially in religion, we love to teach restriction. We love to talk about what you can't do. We love to talk about what's not allowed. But the truth of the matter is faith in God is about liberation. It's about what you can do. And the more you determine and develop a relationship with God and you discover what you can do, nobody has to tell you what you shouldn't be doing because it's not in your spirit. That's the thing that you got to understand is that when you're truly connected with God and you are in a direct relationship with God, nobody has to tell you what you shouldn't do. You ain't got to go. The, 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 the commandments came out of disobedience and a rejection of the relationship. When you are truly in relationship with God, nobody has to tell you what you should not be doing. Your spirit will convict you. I'm talking relationship, not religion now. I'm talking about having a one-on-one -on -one. because it's the one-on-one -on -one relationship that underwrites the faith. I try to use an analogy when I'm trying to teach faith in the uh, importance of relationship is while I know who Jeff Bezos is, and I know who Elon Musk is, and I know who Bill Gates is, and I know who Warren Buffett is. I don't personally know them. I don't have a relationship with them. And therefore, any of my needs that I need to get met or any opportunities that I have that need funding, I'm not comfortable in contacting them. It's not that if the right situation didn't approach, I couldn't develop a plan, but there's no relationship that says to me, if I go there, I'm going to get it. But now if my daddy had it, 
If my daddy had it with the relationship I had with my father before he died, it wasn't even a question. If I came and it was a realistic situation, it was a need, it was a problem or an opportunity, dad was in. That's relationship. And the, the belief that I had and the confidence that I had in my dad, that's faith. Guess what? So whenever something popped up that was bigger than me, I didn't get for, I didn't become frenetic and unglued. Why? Talk to my daddy. You've got to develop an understanding of who you are. See, many of you are suffering from an identity crisis. You don't know who you are. So the world has been telling you for the longest, you're worthless, you're youthless. You, 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 you're minimal, you're barely, all of these things, you're never gonna, all these things because you didn't know who you were. Uh, if you if you want to use the Bible as a, a, a point of reference, I, I like Gideon. <laughs> Gideon is threshing wheat in the wine press. Not because it's a cool little place to thresh wheat, but because he's afraid of the Midianites. And here comes along an angel of God. And says, mighty man of God. And Gideon's looking around like, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? See, Gideon had an identity crisis. Gideon had learned to define himself by him, by his circumstances, by his situation, by his position. He didn't know who he was. He only knew where he was. And he had developed an identity associated with where he was instead of where he was going. I need you to hang with me for a moment. Whether you're Christian or not, this applies. You got to pay attention here. But guess what happened? When I studied that, and I, I mean, when I studied that, I'm looking at it and I'm going, wait a minute, that's something here that I bet you a bunch of people miss. Not once, but more than once, God said, mighty man of valor. And Gideon was like, no, 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 no. I am not only a part of the, least of the clans. I'm the least in my clan. You can't be talking to me. What I found out is that God doesn't call you by where you're at. He calls you by who you are. And you have to learn to call yourself, not by what you've been through, not by where you're at, but by what your destiny tells you about yourself. See, this is a journey. You're going somewhere. You're on this earth to do something. You're not here just to exist. You're not here just to survive. Your day is coming. Your day is coming. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how long you think it's taken. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't turn around. Your day is coming. Yeah, you got some. Stop listening to the random opinions of minimal minded people. Cut it out. you got to understand that story. And then I'm going to end it because I could do this all day. Story. At a point when I was going through one of the most difficult times of my life, maybe 18 years ago, I decided I was going to challenge God to remove me. Now, at this time, I'm ignoring the greatest lesson my grandfather ever taught me. And for those who don't know, my grandfather and my my great grandfather and my great grandmother reared me. So these are my adopted parents, even though they are actually the parents of my grandmother. But he taught me when I was 17 years old that, son, you're going to be in one of three places. 
You're either going to be going into a storm, in a storm, or coming out of one. So your first thought is going to be to look who to blame. Look, look for who's to blame for you being there. Don't waste your time. It's, it's not that important, even though you need to know so you won't go back. But most of the time, it's you. The choices you make, the people you allow around you, the people you associate and affiliated with, it's it's got something to do with a de decision or choice you made. Don't worry about that. Here's your biggest responsibility. Your number one responsibility as a man, is, when you find yourself in the storm, is to make sure you come out of the storm a better man. Than when you went in let the storm mold you let the storm shape you let the storm strengthen you and he taught me that when i was 17 now here i am in my 30s late 30s and i'm in this situation and i decide i'm not going through the storm i'm finna quote some scriptures and make some demands and god's gonna bring me out now what I'm going to tell you about when I'm talking about communion with God, remember I talked about the relationship and I talk about communion with God. I'm talking about communion with the God on a level where your spirit communicates with the spirit of God, that spirit is connected with spirit and the Holy Spirit or God's spirit or whatever you want to call it, because semantics don't mean a lot to me. As long as you understand the principle, the spirit of God is communicating with me, but it's not communicating audibly. I've actually gotten to a place where I am I'm humbled by my situation so much that I'm no longer in 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 in, in, in um uh, embedded in myself. I'm literally seeking because of the depth and the pain and the discomfort of where I'm at. And so I start saying, You gotta get me out of this, you gotta bring me out. And again, it wasn't audible, and this is like two o'clock in the morning. I remember it like it was yesterday. And the spirit spoke to my spirit and said, I won't take you out of it, but I will bring you through. That wasn't the answer I was looking for. Like, no, 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 no. So here we go with some old scripture quotes. I'm throwing them down heavy. And the second time that the spirit spoke, and only someone who is really truly in tune with on a spiritual level, meaning you're not carrying jealousy in your heart. You're not carrying envy in your heart. Not, all that stuff lowers your energy level, your spiritual energy level. And it takes you from a level where God operates and resides and deals with us. We He deals with us. You got to get past gratitude before you can even hear God. This is, you know, you hear people talking about vibration and frequency. It's real. But you got to understand on the simple level, you can't have that heavy stuff on you. Hatred, envy, jealousy, fear, worry, anxiety, all that stuff carries you down. If you measure, you can literally measure it on a hertz scale and it's 200 hertz or lower. Gratitude is 500 hertz. And then after gratitude, you've got love. And then after that, you've got revelation or enlightenment. That's where you learn and you receive. Well, that's where you communicate with God. And what... After the first time of being told, no, I'll bring you through it. I'm like, no, 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 that's all cool. That sounds cool, but that ain't what I'm talking about. This, I got to get out of this. And the second response was a little bit more detailed, but not much. But it was so clear. I have never in my life since asked God to take me out of anything. The response was this. I will not bring you out. I will bring you through it. Hold. But see, you have become embedded in your comfort. But I'm more concerned with your character than I am your comfort. And I can't build comfort in, I mean, I can't build character in comfort. That was the answer. That in my most trying times, God is building the character I need and the integrity to underwrite that character that will hold me at a level that I need to be operating at to do the things that I've been designed to do without folding. You gotta hold on. You, 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 you won't get pulled out of it, but you will be brought through it. And when you come through it, you won't be the person that entered. And that's what it is. You don't get what you want in this life. You get what you become. Hmm. 
I've been through some things that would have broke the average person. But I, I decided to look into my destiny instead of wallow in my presence. I decided that I would listen to the spirit as it communicated to my spirit. And what I found is that no matter how horrible the circumstances was, because my spirit was connected to the spirit of the almighty, there was always something in my spirit that just disagreed with the circumstances. This is what faith begins to transcend facts. If you ain't been there, you need to get there. It's not that what you're seeing isn't real. It's that it can't conquer you. You know, uh, as I as I shut this down, I'm reminded of something that I heard in a movie that totally blew my mind some years ago. The guy was being interviewed by a cop who was trying to stop something and it already happened. And the name of the movie is Deja Vu with Denzel Washington, Paula Patton and everything. But Denzel found a way to travel back in time where this guy who had blew up a ferry. Well, now he's back in time before it actually happens. And he's trying to stop what's already happened. And he's interviewing the guy. And the guy looks at him and says, do you know the definition of destiny? And Denzel said, no, what? He said, the more you try to stop it, you only ensure that it happens. It's already happened. That's the beauty of faith. When you truly understand that what you're desiring to do, when it's of good report and it serves others and it lifts others, it's going to automatically elevate you. If that's your desire, that won't be withheld from you, but you got to trust that what you planted will bear fruit, that you will reap a harvest associated in an alignment with what you've been planted. Let me tell you something. It ain't nothing that you can go through that the Almighty, the Most High, can't bring you out of. But here's the thing, you're gonna have to do your part. You're gonna have to put in some work. You're gonna have to put some skin in the game, so to speak. Number one, stop praying for God to deliver you from the giants he sent you to slate. Wasted prayer. Stop praying for God to do what he sent you to do. Wasted prayer. It's so, I, I, I told a pastor this nine, 10 years ago when he asked me why so many faithful people who are so churched struggle so much. They don't understand prayer. They don't understand the faith process and they don't understand prayer. Prayer is not about getting God to do. Prayer is about revelation. Now, it's communication, too. And one of the things I ask people when they come to me and I ask about their prayer life. After hearing them talk about five minutes, six minutes about how their their their, their basic prayer goes. And I'm saying, OK, we five, ten minutes in the prayer. When do you ever listen? The vast majority of my prayer is getting in so close to God. And knowing that ain't nothing I can tell God that God doesn't already know. So I'm not about wasted motion. I'm getting there like, what you got for me? Hmm. <laughs> what you got for me? What, 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 where am I wrong? Where, what, what's going on? What should I do? See, there's the action side and there's the revelation side. The action side is what requires faith. God isn't going to do for you what you were sent here to do. You were sent here to make a difference. You were sent here to elevate people. You were sent here to encourage, to inspire, to empower. That can't be done. Shoot, you are here for a reason. You're going to have to live out that reason. Every last one of you has a Goliath. And you're going to have to step out there. Now, the power, 
the knowledge and the resources is coming from the most high. But the carrying out of it is come. If, 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 if the dynamic wasn't that way, you wouldn't need to be here. You weren't created just to exist. You were created to be powerful. You were created for greatness. You were created to be exceptional, extraordinary, phenomenal. That, that you were created to come out of the wine press and go down by the river. There are 300 waiting on you. If you know the story, you know what I'm talking Come out of the Rhine press and go down to the river. It's time to put in some work. It's time to get some things done. Stop whining, stop complaining, start standing, start squaring your shoulders and start living. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I didn't even plan on doing this this long, but when my spirit moves me to speak on something, I speak on it the way my spirit moves me. I don't question it. I don't worry about what somebody else is thinking or how somebody else is going to receive it. I'm living mine every day. On that note, I'm going to get off here. Don't forget, uh, if you want to sponsor my latest book project, uh, and I explained it earlier, um, that's the book number 25. Man, wow. Again, plant the seed. I remember being told on the first book, The Invisible Father, Reversing the Curse of a Fatherless Generation, that it couldn't be published, not because it wasn't well written, not because it wasn't well researched, not because it didn't have a purpose, but because the target audience wasn't a dependable audience. That was us. That they couldn't market it and truly expect to get a return. Well, here I'm 25 books later. And on this one, uh, I'm asking you to sponsor. And if you sponsor, you, you, you'll be published in the book along with whoever you want to memorialize. You write your paragraph memorializing who you want to memorialize or just acknowledging who you want to acknowledge. Uh, I'll be acknowledging my wife and my family. Um, and uh, obviously the most high but you 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 not you acknowledge whoever you want to acknowledge who's made a difference in your life whether they are be memorialized because they've passed on or just acknowledged because they're still alive uh, that information is in there also if you want to work with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis to actually literally hash this thing out we i just got through talking about and make something happen in your life this is what i do uh, the information is in there. There are a bunch of different ways you can work with me. If you don't understand, if you don't see what you like, email us and we'll get back with you. But as I always say, you have to live your life. I live my life on full. So that when I leave this place, I die on E. I'm not leaving anything undone. I'm taking every ounce of potential that was planted in my DNA at the time of conception. And I'm going to spend it all here i will not leave this place with regrets i challenge you to do the same thing on that note i'm out of here